In this video, we will continue on with the single strand stopper knots. For entry 519, Asher repeats the overhand knot as it's the basis for the next entries. To tie an overhand knot, make a turn and then bring the end through. The figure 8 knot, also called the figure of 8 and Flemish knot, is much easier to untie than the overhand knot as it doesn't have the same tendency to jam. It's larger, stronger, and just as secure as an overhand knot. To tie the figure 8 knot specific to this entry, first twist the bite a half turn and stick the end through. Entry 521 is an intermediate knot between the figure 8 and stevedore knot. Asha says this knot is seldom seen and is generally tied by mistake while trying to tie a stevedore knot. Begin tying as if you were tying a figure 8 knot. Add one additional half twist and stick the end through. Ashley says that the stevedore knot is a bulky knot that is needed for cargo blocks to prevent the end of the cargo fall from unreaving. The stevedore knot is tied as a previous intermediate knot, but with one more half turn. The end is stuck through to finish it off. There are several ways of doubling the figure 8 knot, and the way shown in entry 523 is said by Ashley to be the one most frequently seen. It involves making a number of racking turns. The number of turns may be increased as desired. Entry 524 discusses the properties of the figure 8 knot in Oysterman's stopper, which suggests an intermediate knot existing between these. The figure 8 knot has a single rim part passing completely around the neck and another at top which nips the end. The Oysterman's stopper has three parts around the rim and one part at top nipping the end. This suggests the existence of a knot with two rim parts and a single top part. The tweenie is what Ashley came up with that comes very near to filling these conditions. It has one top part and two rim parts, but the end is nipped by one of the rim parts instead of the center part. Ashley says it's an excellent knot even though the stem is a bit off-center. The Oysterman stopper is an original knot of Ashley's. He tied it while trying to imitate a large knot he had seen at the end of a foresail halyard. The knot he was trying to imitate was assumed to be peculiar to the Oysterman, but after further inspection, it was just a figure 8 knot tied in the very gouty end of a long jawed halyard. The Oysterman stopper is larger than the figure 8 knot. It has three rim parts which are quite symmetrical when viewed from the underside. The end is nipped by a single top part. It's easy to tie and useful to fill a hole that is too large for a figure 8 knot. First make a turn and pass the end through. Pull the part of the turn out to form a loop. And then bring the end through this loop. The half knot near the end should be pulled snug. Next the end, and then finally the standing part. The knot should be arranged so that it's symmetrical. The quatrefoil is another of Ashley's original knots and is a step beyond the Oysterman stopper. It has four rim parts and one center part which nips the end. Ashley provides a diagram for tying this knot and once understood, it's not too difficult to tie. Once the knot is completed, it needs to be worked into shape. The sink foil has five rim parts and a single center part. Ashley says that it is symmetrical and handsome, but unless tied very carefully and firmly, it tends to capsize and spill. To tie this knot, we will again utilize Ashley's diagram. Once tied, it needs to be worked into shape.
The slip knot is closely related to the overhand knot. The name has also been loosely applied to a number of other unrelated knots. It starts off as an overhand knot, but the end is doubled before tucking it. To untie the knot, the end simply needs to be pulled. A slipped figure eight knot is larger than a slip knot and much less prone to jam. It's also slipped in the same manner. Start off as you would for a single eight knot and then pull a double end through instead of the single end. It can also be easily untied by pulling on the end. A figure eight knot tied in a doubled end is tied the same way as a regular figure eight knot. A harness loop serves well if a stopper knot is required in the bite of a line where the pull may come from either direction. Twist the bite a half turn two times. Pull the top part down, and then up through the turn. The loop knot in entry 533 can be used in the same way as the harness loop, but is more secure and thus a little harder to untie. First make a turn in the bite and bring the rope behind the turn. The final step is to take the bottom portion over, then under, then over again. The last entry that we will look at in this video is the monkey's tail. This is a permanent or semi-permanent stopper that is put in the bite or the end of a rope. It is also called single throat seizing, seized round turned, clinch, and pigtail. It is found about 10 feet from the ends in running rigging to prevent unreaving. For this purpose, the monkey's tail does less damage to the rope than any other knot, as the seizing takes the burden put upon it and not the rope. First a small turn is taken in the rope, and then a throat seizing is put in, which will be about a quarter of the round in length. The seizing is detailed more in a later chapter. In the next video, we will continue with the single strand stoppers and look at those used for heaving lines.